So, hello folks. So, next up, Jonathan and Tolef are going to tell us all about what, what we need to know about G GDPR in Debian. Apparently, we shouldn't be worrying. Well, you know, at least not too much. Don't, don't worry isn't the same as just ignore it. So, we're going to do a rough outline of the screen keeps flashing me, who's in the team, um, why we care about sort of this stuff now, the uh, purpose of the team, uh, progress so far, and then any questions. Um, we've only got a 20 minute session. We are around sort of, I'm around until Sunday morning, I think. I'm around until Sunday afternoon. So, so we're, we're happy to have talks about this informally at any point if you've got any questions. Um, who are we? So officially, um, it's myself, Jonathan McDowell, um, and Tolliff. We, we also have some help from uh, Matthew Vernon, who's not an official delegate to the team, but is on the uh, team alias and has sort of been helping out a bit. Yeah. Uh, why, why do we care about this now? So I'm sure you can't have failed to hear that the um, EU general data protection regulation came into effect on uh, the 25th of May this year. Um, we don't feel that most of what it requires, which we'll go into in a minute, needs changes in Debian, but it does require us to have some form of formal approach to what we're doing and some sort of um, documentation that we, we are aware of the GDPR and that we are taking it on board. At the moment, we have been concentrating very much, um, with that in mind, on documenting what Debian does, documenting what Debian has in the way of personal information about people, um, advising various pieces of the project who have some queries about it. We have not set any new policy. Our hope would be that, in general, we would not need to set any new policy. It would largely be an advice role um, and keeping people on the right side of the regulation. But, but the idea is that we're a very light touch team rather than we're going to weigh in and say, this is what should be happening and, and you have to listen to us and, and change everything you do. So the GDPR is, uh, it's, it's a fairly new piece of EU regulation uh, where the goal is that you should be able to control data that org other organizations hold about you. Uh, so it gives, it has various teeth in that it which we don't, we're not really worried about those for Debian, like they, you try some stuff, but uh, it actually has teeth which uh, makes corporations take this fairly seriously. It's a slightly unusual piece of regulation because it applies globally, so even though Debian is formally a, pro, a part of SBI, uh, it applies to us, it will apply to any other kind of global organization as long as you're aiming toward that you're offering something to, to people in the EU or the European economic area, in fact. Um, to be allowed to do anything with data or any, anything with personal data, sorry, uh, you need some legal basis to do that. You can't just collect random bits of information about people and store them, for instance. Um, you need, so you need uh, some sort of legal basis. That can, there are some, some extra bits, but the, the, the two most common ones are uh, consent. Basically you go, I'm happy for you to have this piece of data because it's, you could actually offer me some useful service based on that. Or there's the, um, remind me. Legitimate interest. Thank you. Where uh, the, the downside for you in me having that piece of data is small enough that it's, it's legitimate. Um, processing is a slightly, has, has a lot broader base than what we would usually consider processing. Processing is not only doing things to data, it's also transferring and storing. Um, personal data is also similarly wide. It's anything which relates to somebody you can identify. Like, you don't have to actually have identified them, but it's, it's very, very broad. So it, it do, it's not only your name or your social, social security number or phone number, it can also be anything else which, based on how you structure your data, it can be things like your shoe size. Um, I mean, we don't care about that, but you know. 
Next. Um, the requirements here, because this is a very new piece of legislation, uh, documentation is really key. The, uh, we might be wrong in, in our approach, but as long as we've documented why we think that what we're doing is correct, it will be given leniency and people, and will be go, and, and data pr protection agencies will go, uh, we think you're wrong, we think you should change it in this way, but they won't actually, will have time to do that, and that's, that's the important part. Um, another important part here is that we have fairly poor control over what data we actually hold about people. There are some obvious ones. We know about mailing list archives. We know about the Debian LDAP and so on. But there are lots of more places where we actually store data about people. Um, things like uh, UDD, of course, uh, change logs, Git repositories, that kind of stuff. There are two um, requirements or two as somebody we hold data about, you have a couple of rights. Um, you, have the you have the right to actually know what data we hold about you. So you can go to Debian and say, like, I would like to have all my data, please. In certain cases, you also have the right to ask for a deletion. That doesn't, that's not an unlimited right. Um, if you're a formal, former DPL, you can't go and ask us to delete all the information about you, that you were the DPL from our web pages, because we actually have an interest in having that information. But if you have a single mailing list post where it's not like, it's not actually that important to Debian, you're allowed to ask for that to be deleted. Um, there's also the uh, a requirement that when we collect data, we collect as little data as we can. So we shouldn't we shouldn't collect data because it, it might be nice to have. We should collect data where we can actually use it for something useful. Um, and whenever possible, we should try to make the data uh, not be personally identifiable. So it should be anonymous or pseudonymous, where instead of having somebody's, your name, somebody's name, you replace that with some random identifier, which you then actually can't tie back to their name. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think just to build on that, there, there's two sort of major changes that come in as part of the GDPR. None of the principles in it are particularly new. Um, a, a lot of what it says are things that organizations, particularly commercial organizations, needed to be doing under previous data protection regulation in the EU. The onus of proof has changed such that instead of the um, information commissioner offices coming to an organization and saying, we think you're out of compliance, here's our proof, um, it's now a case where the ICO can turn up and say, well, we think you're out of compliance, prove you're not. Um, so, so that burden of proof is just more to the organization, making it much easier for the ICO to do their job, and thus creating this documentation requirement. Um, the other thing is it's sort of a, a mindset change about instead of collecting all the things and, and then working out what to do it afterwards, um, it's about only collect the information you actually need, um, and then you'll be in a much better position. Um, so, so, so Debian's been reasonably good about this. We, we have a little bit of a tendency to collect the information and do um, analysis afterwards. Not, not hugely, but that, that's something we do lean towards just in the general collect all the stats thing. But we're quite good about because we are a, a free software project. Everything's out in the open. It's, it's quite easy to sort of point and go, right, well, that's the information you store about me and that's easily for me to find. And, and we don't have the sort of... Um, conversations going on about um, you know, employees or whatever in the background that, that other organizations might have a problem with. So from our point of view, the team purpose is fairly simple. We provide a central point of contact to those outside the project. If you know, someone random has posted the one mailing list, doesn't really understand Debian, there needs to be somewhere that they can come to and say, I have no idea about your organization and it seems that you might have some of my personal information. Um, and rather than expecting those people to understand that really the right person to talk to is Listmaster, we have a single alias data dash protection at debian.org. They can come to and go, hey, who, you know, what, what data do you hold? Now our role at that point is to pass 
them on to the individual service owners rather than directly answer that query themselves. We are not your secretaries, but we will point people in the right direction and make sure that they get the information they need rather than having to navigate through sort of 20 different services in Debian to talk to the people who actually have admin access to each of those services. Um, and on the flip side, we will act as an advice service for those um, service owners. If you run a service and you're not sure whether the information you have is something you need to care about or whether it's appropriate, then come talk to us and, and we'll have a conversation and we'll, we'll try and work out the, the easiest way that you can continue running your service while um, sort of meeting the needs of our users in terms of their privacy. And I think from everyone we've talked to so far, there hasn't been any major changes. I mean, I don't think that anyone has come to us and said or anything we've looked at. Uh, we, we've done some work about documenting what data the project stores and where it is. I think there's a few instances we've realized that we could do some minimization, but there's not been anything where we've looked at it and gone, oh my God, the horror, we're in so much trouble. It's been right, we will document this, we will make sure it's discoverable about what's being stored, um, and, and we're probably good at this point. There, there are some bits where we want to reduce the amount of information we collect, like in LDAP, we store a gender field, and Debian doesn't actually care about the gender, or they're, they're, like we don't care about it on a per person basis in for for yeah. in accounts service. Yeah, LDAP has actually been the worst one in that you can store a whole bunch of information about yourself, including your GPS coordinates, but all of it is voluntarily stored. Um, it's only available to the project. You can easily delete it. So while there's not really a lot of point in us storing that information, it's the, the, the worst example we could come up with and it didn't seem that bad. Um, things like mailing list posts, they're all in public, so you can see them anyway. Uh, we were getting deletion requests anyway. List masters have had to deal with those in the past, so it's not something that hasn't come up um, before. So it's not been too bad. Um, and, and sort of in that sense, in terms of the central point for where you can find out information, what we've actually realized is we already were most of the way there with Enrico's work on contributors.debian.org. Um, and that sort of accepts data feeds from various services that indicate when someone's been active within Debian. And previously the project had been using that to acknowledge contributions that people have made to the project so that they could be visible and they could go, right, I, I am acknowledged as someone who's involved in Debian even if I don't have a formal Debian maintainers or a Debian developer status. Um, but it turns out that that's quite useful to be able to then say, well, here's what we store on you, here's where, how we recognize what you've done. Um, and, and the, the good services that are integrating with that already both provide the information about who they know about, but then also provide a link back to the service that provides the data takeout functionality. Um, if it comes to the point down the line that we feel that we need a proper takeout functionality and, and a one-click button that says, give me all the data that Debian holds, that will be the site we use it for. At the moment, um, we're quite keen that any service that isn't already talking to contributors.debian.org uh, goes and does that. And it's a simple matter of a, a post request to the interface sort of once a day and, and you say, here's my data and it's JSON and it's relatively easy to do and there's about half a dozen or a dozen different services already integrated so there are plenty of examples out there. Um, the other thing is we now have a privacy policy on the website. It actually lists all of the internal services that are provided under Debian.org that we could come up with. It lists what data we think is collected. It lists retention policies if appropriate. Um, we know there is information missing on that. If you run a service in Debian, go check if it's on there. Go check if the information is right. Let us know if it needs updated. The idea is at the moment that's a documentation effort. It is, I can go and see where the project might store my information. I can go and see which service I services I interact with that might cause my data to be stored. Any questions? So not so much a question, but a comment. So I was talking with Noodles last night in the bar, as you do, um, and I promised that we would add a link to the privacy policy in the wiki. That's happened, literally five minutes ago. Um, I would recommend everybody else who can, who needs to, clearly also add a link to the Debian privacy policy pages on, on the website if you're wanting a service that, that holds data. Um, you know, I'm happy to help and advise on anybody on anybody who needs that. Yeah, the the policy um, privacy policy went live this week. So thanks to Laura, who's not here, who did a lot of work on 
getting that active on the website and proposing various cleanups to it. So it's now linked from the footer on every page in www.debian.org and on the front page. I mean, I think if, if I had one takeaway that I'd like everyone to go away with, it's that the sky isn't falling, this isn't a terrible thing, but you do need to be aware of it and make sure that you are on the right side of compliance. The project ethos is very much in compliance with the GDPR. We just need to make sure we're actually adhering to that and have documented it. Sure. And, and, and also, it, the, we like the GDPR. Like it, it actually protects users. It, it gives power to users instead of corporations and instead of organizations. Mm -hmm. So I, th like, I think with all my projects hats on that this is really a, like, it's, it's a great thing. Uh, sure, it costs work for us, but not that much. And it really aligns with, with the project's goals. Yeah, it's definitely a great thing. You know, it's only encouraging people to do what they should have been doing properly already, you know, and it now actually gives better guidelines. And I think the key thing is it gives teeth to the people who are trying to regulate things. So people who are not doing the right things are looking petrified as they should be. That was easier than I thought it might be. <laughs> I guess that's everything. Thanks very much, guys. Welcome. Thank you.